Hey everyone, it's Lauren here. I've got a fun, colourful, bright, punchy, cool, extra fun layout here for you today. I have been lucky enough to treat myself to the new Flutterby Designs Mark Makers Collection. And as you can see by looking, flicking through all these papers, it's bright, fun, happy, inspiring. And I knew it would be perfect to scrapbook this photo of my gorgeous Katie and her she re recently received her first debit card and snapped this selfie of herself and I think the look on her face you can tell she is so excited to begin her life of shopping with a card. Flutter by Designs Mark Makers also has a some stencils and this collection's just yeah it's full of lots of goodies so I encourage you to pop on over to Flutterby Designs if this collection is jumping out at you too and check out Mark Makers. So I scrapbooking my project life in a 9x12 format this year and that means that this layout I'm cutting down to a 9x12 inch and I'm incorporating pocket style style scrapbooking and 9 by 12 inch layouts throughout my album to sort of cover the year. In the next, probably the next four weeks, I'll share a flick through of my January to March 2020 album and then you'll get a bit of a gist of what I mean when I'm incorporating layouts with pocket style scrapbooking. I know it probably sounds a bit confusing now, but I assure you it kind of, it, it's kind of working. <laughs> Anyway, so I recently, one of my fellow design team members from the Hip Kit Club, Christina Sales, recently did a layout and it had, she had used a patterned paper to, and then ripped a section out of it and then put another pattern paper behind it and then scrapbooked within that section. And that really inspired me. I really struggle with using pattern papers as a background because it's so heavy and I feel at times it takes away from the photo I tend to be a white background girl and so but I this layout of Christine has really inspired me to have a go and when I got mark makers I knew that this was a collection that I was going to be brave and use a pattern paper as the majority paper on a layout so as you can see I've just torn a section out of this um, pattern paper and I am going to use that white space to build my layout and my sort of my main cluster within that and I'm going to try to run it up the page I want it to be thinner at the top and I'm going to build it out down the bottom I hope that makes sense you'll see it sort of unfold but I guess the reason why I'm just sort of mentioning that is I I encourage well my thinking is if I don't have something going from small to medium or top to bottom, that the layout would just end up merging all over the page. And that would mean busyness everywhere, busyness in your paper, busyness in your embellishments. And really, I would feel that it would lose the focus on the photo. I really try to always create layouts, enjoying the arty, creative side of it but not at the detriment of taking away from the sub, the main subject. And I know that at times that can be a really tricky balance to find, especially when there's so many gorgeous goodies to play with. Um, but I really try for my documenting of photos and memories to always keep in the forefront of my mind that my photo has to be the main star. It has to be the thing that jumps out and not get lost in a, in a busy page. So this one... When I decide to use this pattern paper, I, I will tell you, I'm I'm not lying. I was nervous. <laughs> I was nervous. I get so inspired by artists like um, Adele Toomey from Inky Quill, who uses patterned backgrounds. She does that so well. And I always watch her videos and I think, yep, I can do it. She's so inspiring. She's inspiring me. I'm going to go and do it. And then when I get there, I go, no, I, nope, I'm not comfortable. I'm not doing it. <laughs> And I end up pulling out the trusty white card stock and moving on from there, which, you know, it's sort of my go-to and it's what made, it's scrapbooking made easy for me if I do it that way. So here I am stepping out of my comfort zone. I hope you like the result. I hope you like where I'm kind of going with this. But when I knew, I when I saw Christina's layout and I've recently seen a video of um, Inky Quill where she used to like cut up lots of 
different pattern papers and put them on the background. I thought, right, I'm going to give this a go. And I had the perfect collection to do that. So I've got my background done. I've done a tear. And then using these frames, I've sort of rattled them from the bottom up to the top. And you'll see me shortly using the off cut of that yellow one that's poking off the bottom of the page there. And that's going to go right up the top of my layout because I want that transition from the top to the bottom to sort of go go well so heavier at the bottom up to lighter at the top if that kind of makes sense that's where I'm sort of thinking in my head along those lines so yeah the other thing that I really do struggle with at times it's like a layout where I'm just pushing myself today is angles and I've got these gorgeous frames and I don't know about you but sometimes I set them out before I stick them down I go yeah that's perfect and then as soon as I move them off to put the ad adhesive on I go oh my goodness I don't know what angle was what and it just doesn't doesn't look the same so I don't know if angles are tricky for you um, if they are let me know of the comments if you're one you're you're in the you know angle trickiness family like me or if you've got any tips for me or um, ideas on how the rules around angles I would love to hear it because there is something to angles I I know I'm I've done no formal study in art or anything or graphic design or anything in those I just go with what feels good and what I think looks good but when it comes to angles I think there must be like a formula <laughs> to it I don't know let me know in the comments help me out is there a formula to angles that makes them look perfect every time <laughs> so back onto the layout I'm I easily distracted I wanted to make sure that with all this busyness that I was keeping some white space in my layout I was keeping because I didn't want to all that beautiful tearing work I did I didn't want to lose it by covering it all over with embellishments so the I didn't want to use large embellishments that would lose that white so I've just gone and using a few of those photo tabs put some down down the page and under my photo there and I'm just using some absolutely delightful little ephemera hearts just to help that feeling from heavier down the bottom up to lighter up the top so as you can see I'm using a number of hearts down the bottom but as it transitions I'm making those hearts go narrower and lighter up to a tiny little one that I'll shortly put up the top there and you'll see that that's kind of like drawing that drawing your eye up to the top of the page I hope I'm making sense I, I, I don't know if I am or not let me know in the comments if you have no idea what I'm talking about <laughs> I'll try and help you out but maybe maybe I've maybe I'm lost maybe I'm lost but what I do know for sure are these hearts are absolutely delightful and I just I wish I had a whole bag of these gorgeous little arty hearts a mark maker hearts yeah so that good the oh no as you saw I did a bit of fussy cutting there that was out of the beautiful pattern paper and I just am going to use that to cut out titles when I'm using this collection it was an easy fussy cut to do and a really economical way of making great titles oh no I thought was absolutely perfect and hang on also so hang on oh no this little girl is going to go shopping crazy she um she just she was just in here earlier getting it so she could do a little bit of online shopping but anyway it's a it's a world I'm sure to have its ups and downs I don't know tell me any mums out there with young girls that already have debit cards what's the tips and tricks to putting boundaries in place because I think I might need to tap into a few of those so I pulled out my sewing machine here and I'm going to do a double border using a larger stitch length which is the stitch length on my brother sewing machine is 4.5 and I'm just going to do a double border and just sort of wiggle them over each other a little bit so it sort of makes it a little bit messy I did think afterwards that a black stitch would have looked really good but that would have meant I would have to unthread my machine and do another bobbin and I thought no I'm too lazy <laughs> One, the other thing I like to do is I just put a bit of adhesive on the um, start and end just to make sure that cotton doesn't unravel. I do do a little back stitch to start um, when I'm when I'm about to start and stop sewing, um, but I just you know the 
I'm just not sure that will hold enough. So just a little bit of adhesive just secures that down. And I'm just finishing off here now with a few splatters of watered down white acrylic paint. This is what I do in a lot of my layouts and it just sort of adds a little bit of magic to your layout. That little bit of a white space there, I'm going to do my journaling in, but I'm going to do that off camera because I wanted to wait until that paint dried. And there you go. There's my layout with my journaling added. And I hope this has inspired you to do a layout using a background that's really bright and happy and, and bold. And I hope that um, if this Mark Makers collection has inspired you, go head on over to Flutter by Designs and check it out. All right, guys. Happy scrapping. Take care. Bye.